Hello and welcome to Liberty Benton High School for tonight's district semifinal matchup between the St. Mary's Rough Riders and the Elida Bulldogs. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergal and Dar. It is going to be a fantastic game tonight. Two w WBL teams going at it in the postseason. Oh, yeah. The best time of the year on top of all of it. And then you get to add that little extra bit to it. It, it makes for an outstanding and fun environment. Oh, it certainly does. Man. I mean, particularly when you got teams that have played each other already and are familiar with each other, know each other, know how to, the WBL plays games and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's gonna be an exciting game tonight. So let's take a look at tonight's tips of the game, starting first for the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Well, I think for St. Mary's, first thing they gotta do is they gotta get offensive rebounds. They've gotta get those second opportunity shots and you know, put some of those in, you know. And the second thing they do, they gotta shut down the paint. Now they got two big guys at six foot six Turner and six foot seven Agsman out there, and they gotta shut down that, that paint keep your light out of there as much as they can. And they want to control the tempo of this game too. You know, they, they don't want to get into a running match with uh, Elida. They want to kind of slow it down, play some half court offense, and just kind of control the game in that respect. Now on the other side of the floor for the Elida Bulldogs, what do they need to do to advance tonight? Well, Elida's already beaten St. Mary's this year, 58 to 49 in the regular season. So what they got to do is take control of this game early. They don't want to let the St. Mary's team hang around, you know, They've got to take control. They've got to get out the big lead. They've got to maintain that lead. You know, don't let St. Mary's stay in the game because if they do, you're going to have a close one at the end again. The second thing is to push St. Mary's out of that paint. You know, they know they got the two big guys for St. Mary's in there they got to deal with. So you want to push them out of the paint, force them to take you know, short-range jumpers or whatever, and maybe some three-point shots on the outside. But get those guys out of the paint, and you got to hold your own on the boards against the St. Mary's team. Both teams averaging about 22 rebounds a game, so that's pretty close in that respect. But they know what they got to do inside. They've got to get in there, they got to box out, and they got to get rebounds. It is survive and advance time here. And we'll take a look at the brackets, take a look at how both of these teams have made it this far. Starting first over in that Northwest 2 sectional, Elida had to take, uh, take out Defiance first to make it way that took home the sectional championship. Elida, the one seed over on that side of the bracket, I think coming into this season, that would have been a little bit of a surprise if you told teams, hey, the Elida Bulldogs, they're going to be your one seed. But they had a fantastic year. Coach Tabler, uh, that transformation of the team he took over, really complete right now. Had a lot of young guys that he's been able to mold, and they had that success as they were able to move through the regular season. Gave it a run there in the WBL late, but it all ended up with that one seed in here tonight in the district semis. Oh, certainly did. And, you know, and, they, and like I said, they're on a little bit of a roll. They've won three out of the last four, you know, and they started out the season. You know, it's rocky when you get a new coach. you got to go through some steps. you got to get the, you know, what he does and what you want to do, kind of mix that all together and stuff. But they've done a great job when they get into this tournament time. So, yeah, it's going to be a challenge for them. But, you know, hey, I think we'll be up for it. And you saw in the bottom part of that bracket, you know, we, everybody talks about this being the Western Buckeye League. Uh, sectional, you know, uh, St. Mary's had to take on another WBL full in the Kent Wildcats. They were able to knock them off to give themselves a shot here uh, once again. So the march continues as the district semifinals is just about underway here at Liberty Benton High School. We're going to step aside, but when we return, we will have tonight's starting lineup in the opening tip. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School. Tonight, starters are being announced. We'll take a look at them as well. Starting first for the St. Mary's Rough Riders. They are going to start number one, Noah Payne. Number five, Cobain Owens. Number 13, Alex Haney. Number 22, Jace Turner. And number 24, Evan Hanksman. On the other side, Coach Tabler's going to roll out a starting five looking like this. Number zero, Zori Island. Number one, Seth Sharp. Number four, Amari Walsh. Number 13, Jackson Cobalt. And a number 31, David Edscorn. So when you take a look at those starting lineups from both teams, Coach Tabler has a lot of experience on that side. A lot of these guys have been playing three, four years, significant varsity minutes for the Alina Bulldogs. And I think that's really been the big difference in this team and how they've been able to make this jump. You know, you saw the first year of only, I, I believe it was two wins, and then a jump to six, seven, eight wins, something like that. And then this year, up to 16 victories. I, and that really is the story. You know, the, the one thing about St. Mary's is 
you know, win, winning breeds winning, right? This St. Mary's Rough Riders team, they've had a lot of success over the years, so it's not as big of a shock to see them with the record that they've had and the success that they've had to be here. But on the other side, the Bulldogs, you know, not everybody would have thought coming into this season that we'd see them here and, you know, coming into this game as, at least on paper, a favorite. Oh, yeah, I, I agree, Nate. I, you know, like I said, the St. Mary's, I mean, you look down through the roster, they've got some guys out there that's been around for a while. You know, but Elida just, just getting that mix together. I mean, just, you know, coming together. They started out the season pretty good. You know, you look at their, their record starting out. They were, you know, they came out and they lost to Shawnee right off the bat, but then they rolled off a whole bunch of wins right, right away. You know, which surprised a lot of people. I don't think they expected them to reel off those kind of wins. But then they, you know, kind of hit a couple bumps in the road against some really good teams. And they've been able to put it together towards the end. St. Mary's did about the same thing. I mean, they came out, they won their first game, they lost their second, then reeled off some other, you know, wins as well. You know, and they're on a, a good five-game winning streak right now. So, yeah, and you wouldn't have expected Elided to be the number one seed coming into this. I, it, that's true. But they are a team that really, I think, is on a mission. You know, they know that they, you know, a lot of times they've been the underdog. And a lot of teams didn't expect them to, to be where they're at right now. So I think they're going to come out here firing in all cylinders. And if they can get their defense going early, you know, St. Mary's could be in trouble. At least two teams last met on February 9th. That was a 58-49 victory for the Bulldogs. So it wasn't that long ago that these guys saw each other once again. Round number two here of the 2024 season. As it's going to start off with a three-pointer. Evan Angsman able to connect. Angsman is a 6'7 senior, and he's averaging about 20 points a game. You know, 38% from three-point range. That's his 186 three-pointer he's tried this season. So we have tonight's first Web Insurance three-pointer. Elida trying to come down with an answer. That one's going to be off the mark. Rebounded by the Rough Riders. Owens gets it over to Anksman and gets, gives it back. Owens up top, guarded tightly by Walsh. Payne kicks it down low. Pass back out. And right now you see St. Mary's looking to try to get the inside game going. A good job of defense right there by Elida. Deep three oh that my. time. Anksman trying an early heat check. Can't get that one to go down. Here comes Elida. Amari Walsh drops it off underneath. As Seth Sharp has all sorts of contact down there, but they're going to say out of bounds. Either way, it'll stay with the Bulldogs. Yeah, it looked more like a pin down there than anything else. I didn't know we went into the wrestling match, but that's okay. Mari Walsh with the basketball for the Bulldogs. They're going to look to get the scoring going. Zori Island going to call the shots for the offense for most of the night tonight. Elida with three different players and averaging in double figures, so they're a little bit balanced when it comes to scoring. That scoring turnaround jumper off the front of the rim. Rebound ends up in the hands of Angsman. Angsman pushes it up ahead to Payne. And now St. They're Mary's just tried 423 three-point shots this season. It's a lot of three-pointers. Jace Turner with the basketball down in the corner. As you can see on the floor, the Rough Riders have a significant height advantage over the lineup that the Bulldogs have out there right now. A little bit of surprise that St. Mary's isn't trying to force this underneath here from the early going. Settling for those three-pointers, that one's going to rim out. Ends up in the hands of Island. And that's given a light and a good opportunity to get those rebounds as well. Edscorn with the deep three. David Edscorn connects on a Web Insurance three-pointer. We are all tied here at three early in the first quarter. That's scoring a 41% three-point shooter. Yeah, it's surprising to see their big guys are out front there just trying to play from out there. I mean, we know that they have that shooting ability, but you would have thought that they would have tried to at least try to establish something down low here in the early going. We'll see yeah. if they try to get to that is. You see Island with the quick hands. That one's going to go out of bounds off of Elida, so it will stay with the Rough Riders. And that's the thing with Elias' defense is you want to play around with the basketball out there too much, they're going to take it away from you. And this St. Mary team, like I said, really needs to try to get, at least try to get something going on the inside to test the waters in there and see what they can get. Payne with the basketball has it knocked away. He will gather it back in. He's going to drive. Has to stop, pushes it back out. Elida doing a great job of clogging that inside, not letting St. Mary's have anything 
at least open or at least a good look. Turner trying to establish himself down there and get the ball into his hands. He's going to kick it back out. Three-point try on its way. This one circles the rim twice, falls out. Yeah, and Turner's got a six-inch advantage there underneath. And then Amari Walsh was trying to get things going quickly on the other end. And he's lost that one. It goes out of bounds. It'll go back to the Rough Riders. See number two, Parker Krim, checking into the game for Elida. Elida putting a little bit of a press on, trying to force some turnovers on the St. Mary's team. He's averaging about nine turnovers a game. Still tied at three. 440 left to go here in the opening quarter. St. Mary's with the basketball. This one's going to get knocked out of bounds. Nice hands by Amari Walsh that time. Recognized that pass coming over the top. Was able to knock it out. Amari Walsh, just a sophomore, 5'10", sophomore, averaging about 12 points a game, but he's got those quick hands on defense as well, and that's what Elida's going to give these guys a fit all night long if they, St. Mary's can't get anything going. Payne gets cut off, has to get it down to Turner. Turner drops it off. Nice job by Haney to run the baseline. He gets rewarded with the pass and able to finish with the basket. Zori Island trying to go quickly. Tried to pass it down into the corner to Edscorn once he was in the air. But as you can see on our instant replay, the help comes, has to get rid of it. And a nice job by Noah Payne to knock that out. Three-pointer from the corner on its way, no good. Owens comes up with the rebound. Well, both teams content to throw up three-pointers, and that's leaving long rebounds for the other team. Hanksman finally tries to go to the inside. Can't get that one to go, but he's going to make a trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. He's an 82% free throw shooter. For your big guy at six foot seven, that's, that's what you need. He is 105 out of 128 three point, or free throws. Hankman's first shot is good. A somewhat of a lost art at the free throw line, and especially around big guys. Hankman goes two for two. Scores now 7-3, St. Mary's on top. Island with the basketball, has to get it back over. Almost had that one taken away, but Edscorn able to get it, steps into a three, that one's gonna be no good. Turner went up and ripped that rebound away. Here comes the Rough Riders on the other end. Nice spin towards the baseline, oh, high on the glass. What a move by Alex Haney. Man, he took advantage of all of that backboard on that one. Gonna have a foul on the other end. This one is gonna go against Haney. It'll be his first, team's first of the quarter. Zori Island runs off the floor, so something must have happened during that poke. I don't know if he shot in the nose. And he kind of looked like he was looking at his hand as well. So we'll have to wait and see if he comes back. And he immediately took off towards the other end. As you see, Seth Sharp coming back into the game. Hopefully Zori won't be out long. The Bulldogs will need him on the floor tonight. Sharp has this pass taken away. Haney all over the floor. Quick outlet all the way down. The ball oh, never touches the ground. What a great job. And Noah Payne took that in like a wide receiver. One step up. Look at his instant replay. One what a, step what a off, shot. falling backwards behind himself off the glass. What a impressive oh, sc no uh, scenario that we just had with the St. Mary's Rough Riders, all starting with the Alex Haney steal. Wow, what a shot. Had it back to the basket and everything. Well, Noah Payne not able to connect from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. This one's going to be taken away as Cobain Owens reaches up and gets that one. Owens working through the screen, has to drop it off. Down into the corner, Haney for three. That one's going to be no good. Going to have a push off though as Amari Walsh. Officials say he used that offhand. We'll check it out here on our instant replay. Fighting for position and he definitely gets extension right into the back of Owen. So I know Coach Tabler not happy with that call, but it does look like it was the right one. 11 to three, the Rough Riders have come out of the gates and the offense has been firing. Turner going oh, over yeah. three. Jace Turner with a web insurance three pointer as the Rough Riders right now are on fire. Yeah, they just can't seem to miss and Elida just can't get anything going on offense. They can't get any kind of rhythm going at all. 
Amari Walsh lost it. They were able to get it back. That shot's going to be no good. Parker Krim fights for the rebound. Can't get it. And that ball stayed loose all the way to the sideline. But ends up going out of bounds. Last touch by Elida. And Zori Island coming back into the game. I mean, Elida's trying to get it on the inside. But they just, you know, there's too many tall trees in there. And they just can't find any room in there. You can see as another extension. And... Going to say there's not going to be a foul. It looks like they're just going to say that that one went out of bounds off of a Bulldog. It looked like there was some extension. It could have been an offensive foul called there, but the officials say no. So St. Mary's fortunate here to keep possession. See number 23, Brennan Steger has checked in for the Rough Riders. He has the basketball in the corner. Looks for somewhere to go with it. Payne, long three-point try. That one's going to be no good. Sharp went up, got that rebound. Here comes Kovalt. Kovalt off the glass. That one's no good. Walsh with the hustle rebound. Walsh has this one blocked, gets it back, stays with it. Third attempt, and Amari Walsh pays it off. That's Walsh's first basket of the night. 14 to 5. And now we're going to have an over in the back call as the defensive pressure from Elida is stepping up. And that's what the Bulldogs have to do. They've got to put all kinds of pressure on these guys, you know, to get that ball. They've got to neutralize this, the height that St. Mary's has with their defense. That's just the first turnover, though, for the Rough Riders. Another substitution coming into the game. Alex Haney checking back in. Cobain Owens will take a seat. Island hands it off to Edscorn. A little bit of a weave up top. Ends it back into the hands of Island. Island working one on one. Gets cut off. Good defense by Payne. Try to get it over to Edscorn. Goes off the leg of Haney and out of bounds. 133 left to go here in the quarter. Elida will keep possession. The Rough Riders doing a good job of keeping Elida out there on the perimeter, making them play, play ball out there and not getting on the inside. Evan Jackson checks into the game for the Bulldogs. Elida has the basketball, trying to cut into this lead. Sharp gets cut off, kicks it back out. Edscorn able to get Turner to leave his feet. Oh, Great find down low. Edscorn kept his head up and found a wide open Evan Jackson underneath, and he gets it to go for two. Well, that's Jackson's first basket of the night, averaging about two points a game. You can see that man-to-man -man defense, that pressure really stepping up. And it's going to cost Zori Island a foul right there, though. As you can see on our replay, Island all over Payne. And maybe a little bit of exaggeration by Payne there, but it was enough to get the officials' attention. Hanksman triggers the inbounds, gets it right back. He's going to drive with the left hand, goes baseline, has to get it over to Turner. Turner kicks it back out, extra pass. Hanksman can't get that one to go. As you see, Jace Turner just took that one away with his length. St. Mary's couldn't cash in on the extra opportunities. He had gotten it down to Haney. It was a great job by Island to come over with that help defense. And then it goes out of bounds and stays with the Rough Riders. Back into the hands of St. Mary's, though. And they, you know, right now, they're kind of controlling this game. They kind of slowed down on their scoring a little bit. Hanksman fall away, that one's no good. Elida has a one-man advantage, they can go quick. Walsh finds himself open down there, can't get it to go. Cobalt with the rebound. Island has it down to Walsh in the corner. Walsh three-point try, no good. Turner with another rebound. He is just dominating underneath on both the offense and defensive board. And those long three-pointers like that by both teams have turned into offense or defensive rebounds for the other team. 14 seconds left to go here in this opening quarter. We got a seven point game. We're going to have a kick ball. See Owens on the replay trying to get it over to Haney. But Walsh with the tight defense to flex it. Oh my. Haney wide open for three. That one's going to be no good. Eight seconds left to go. Island going to go quickly. Going to drive all the way, almost completely unguarded. And he gets that one in. Corey Island took a nice time to get his first two points of the quarter as the Bulldogs have some momentum. 
St. Mary's remains on top, though, 14-9. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Tonight's premier sponsor for you, Linda, is John Stocker DDS. John Stocker DDS is a proud sponsor of the Alina Bulldogs, and they're providing dental care for high school sports fans. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School, where the St. Mary's Rough Riders jumped out to a big lead. They were up 14 to three at one point, but a six nothing run by the Bulldogs to close out the quarters got them back within striking distance. Yeah, and that came to the strength of their lightest defense to be able to take the ball away. Now they only have one turnover for the Rough Riders, but really their speed and the quickness for Elida is paying off for them. Zori Island immediately goes back to attacking the rim as he's going to get fouled. He'll make a trip to Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Island, a 70% free throw shooter, been the line, shot 81 free throws so far this season. Island's first shot is on its way and it is no good. Yeah, they need those baskets when the clock's not moving. As a team, Elias is a 63% free throw shooting team. Zori not able to connect on either one of his shots. St. Mary's comes up with the rebound. Score stays tied, or excuse me, stays at 14 to nine. Owens with the right hand, trying to move around, gets it down into the corner. Turner with the extra pass. Owens three point try is good. Cobain Owens gets his first points of the night. And it is a Webb Insurance Agency three pointer. Just great half-court offense there by St. Mary's, able to move the ball around until they found the open guy. That's scoring. Looking to get around the defense, ends up in the hands of Koval. Koval's gonna drive in the lane, has it rejected. Krim, though, comes up with the basketball, gets it to Wash, the floater in the lane, no good. Parker Krim fighting for the loose ball. Another miss, another fight, and gets it as Krim just kind of pushed it up. A lot of contact underneath, but the officials letting them play. On the other side, St. Mary's quickly moves it up. They caught the line of defense getting in transition slowly as they get some more points. Island coming the other way as the tempo has definitely picked up. Cram with another opportunity. Wash oh, on the floor. God. Bodies flying everywhere. Oh, Amari God. Wash gets two points. They're definitely letting them play out there, that's for sure. Six twenty-five left here in the half. Eight-point game. St. Mary's on top, 19 to 11. Turner Rough Riders going to slow it down a little bit now, kind of catch their breath. Yeah, I don't think that St. Mary's wants to get into a track meet with Elida. They love to play that up-tempo, up and down the floor type of game, and that just doesn't suit what St. Mary's wants to do. Angsman with the basketball, going to work against that scoring. That's that one-on-one -on -one size mismatch we talked about. David Etzcorn is a strong young man, but Angsman with that height just took him right to the basket. Yeah, good elevation, high off the board for the two points. Cobalt trying to get it down to Krim. He has to kick it out. Walsh with that right hand on the baseline doesn't connect on anything. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. St. Mary's takes it. It's going to be a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you play in your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergall. And Dar, it has been an intense, fast-paced first half here as St. Mary's has pushed their lead out to 10 points. But Elida, they are trying to use that speed, that athleticism that they have to get themselves back into this one. That's a very physical game, too, you know, between the two. You know, and, and that's the St. Mary's advantage, really. Noah Payne coming off of the screen, connects on a web insurance agency three-pointer. You see the contrast in shooting right now. I've got 15 two-pointers for Elida, and I've got 11 three-pointers for St. Mary's. 
And that actually, we just heard they had changed that, and that was only a two-pointer. So the officials said they must have been on the line. I think everybody in the gym thought it was a three-pointer yeah. when it went through, including the, uh, the announcer here. And I think Noah Payne thought it was a three-pointer, too. 23 to 11. Walsh has to get rid of it. Island looked on the inside for a second, decides to drive. Went right at three Rough Riders and got that one to go down. So you watch with a little bit of pressure. Owens able to get out of trouble. Island quick hands knocked that one free, but St. Mary's kept, kept possession. Turner gets it over to Owens. Owens for three. That one's going to be off the side of the rim. Sharp comes up with the rebound. Both teams about 12 rebounds for Elida, 11 for St. Mary's. Island tried to run the floor that time. A little bit too strong on that one off the glass. Extra pass, here is Payne. Can't connect on that one. Long rebound ends up back in the hands of Payne. Owens, he's gonna drive. Looked like he thought about a three-pointer for a second. Decides to put it on the floor. St. Mary's taking advantage of the long arms that they have and just to be able to work the ball around and find open guys. You're right, they don't want to get into a running match with these guys, but they can play some good half-court offense. Chase Turner going to try to connect as he gets his second basket and his second web insurance three-pointer. We were a little critical of how many threes they were putting up there, especially with this height advantage. But here in the second quarter, that's already their third. As they continue to be able to knock them down. Yeah, four for 13 now, three-point range. They have a jump ball call. His official underneath the basket comes in. Take a look at the instant replay. Cobalt working against Haney, goes up. Haney gets his hand on it, uses that left hand. It's a good call by the officials. Unfortunately for Elida, though, that possession arrow yeah. went against them, so St. Mary's comes up with the basketball. Oh, good job of breaking the press there. Turner gets it underneath, and it's almost too easy right now for St. Mary's. As they had no problem breaking the pressure from Elida. Elida's struggling just to get the ball inside. When they get inside against those big guys underneath there, there's just no room to shoot the ball at all. So if they don't start hitting a couple outside shots, they're going to be in deep trouble. Island, left-hand floater off the glass, no good. Jackson with the tough rebound. Gets it back out to Walsh, and Elida is going to reset. 2.30 left to go here in the half. That's going with the basketball. And you can just see right now with the spacing that St. Mary's is forcing Elida into. They're, with that long arms and the reach that they have, they're never too far away from poking that ball away. And right now, Elida just five for 18 from two-point range and one for five from three-point range. So you know, they got to knock down some shots from the outside, kind of open up that middle a little bit because right now St. Mary's just clogging it all up. Walsh wide open for three. Can't get that one to connect. And right now, Elida's, I think, one of their bigger issues is more, more, more possessions than not. It is one and done as St. Mary's right now is dominating on the glass. Nice job by Island to rip that one away. Amari Walsh going to go all the way in with the left hand. No good. Long pass down court. Angsman, he's going to take it all himself. And Edscorn ran a long way to make sure that Evan Angsman wouldn't get that one to go down. There's going to be a talk, I would imagine, about whether or not that this is going to be a little bit more than a common foul. Say no, just a regular foul. So Evan Aksman is going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. Aksman's first shot is up and it is good. Yeah, I think he he had dunk all the way in his mind, but you know, great job Asport to get over there. I don't think it was really an intentional foul. I think he was just trying to knock him down or knock him away from the basket. Angsman goes two for two, and I agree with you. I think that that was more just momentum. Yeah, Escort had to run a long way very fast to even try to get his hands on that one. And right now, Elida just all out of sync. Cobalt looks to drive. 
There is nothing on the inside for Elida. He's not. Sharp's going to try. And St. Mary's is just getting their hands on almost everything. Island, though, able to do a nice job to jump in front of that pass. So Elida now with another opportunity. Island, he's going to go. All sorts of traffic. And it looked like Angsman had gotten a piece of that ball, but also must have gotten a piece of the bodies. We can check out the replay here. Angsman comes over for the help. They're going to say foul is Zori Island's going to get a trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. So he can't buy a basket. They can. He's now 0 for 3 from the line here in the quarter. One oh five left to go here in the half. Island lines up his second shot on its way, and it is good. Final minute here in the half. St. Mary's is in control. Payne with the extra oh, pass as Turner does a nice job cutting to the basket. Jace Turner with the easy layup. Island works against Payne as Payne able to get his hands on that one and knocks it loose. 30 seconds left to go. We've seen St. Mary slow it down. They have an opportunity here to see if they can't take the last shot of the half. And Eli is trying to put a press on, but it's hard to put a press on against guys that are taller than you and they're just throwing it over the top of you. It has been an 18 to five quarter so far in favor of the Rough Riders. As Island almost comes up with the steal, but that's going to touch out of bounds and will stay with St. Mary's. Well, St. Mary's just done a great job of half-court offense, and, and when they do run the ball down, you know, they're finding the open guy. Oh, it finds Turner, Turner down low. The hesitation by Turner to let the defense fly by. He's going to pick up the contact, can't get it to go down, but he's going to make a trip to the Leafs famous recipe chicken free throw line. Turner a 69% free throw shooter. Turner is a second team WBL player, averaging about 13 points a game. Turner's first shot on its way, hung on the rim for a second, but pretty much like everything else here in this first half, it's going St. Mary's way and it fell in. Kind of coaxed that one in a little bit, leaned into it. Second shot on its way. That one's going to rim out. Evan Jackson comes up with the rebound. Island going to have to go quickly. Two, one, shots on its way, and it's off the front of the rim. The first half has come to a close, and it has been all Rough Riders as they hold the big lead, 33-14. to 14. We're going to step aside. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's three-pointers are sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Tonight's free throws are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back to a Liberty Benton High School. Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergal. And Dar, it, that first quarter was you know, interesting. We thought that this was going to be a back and forth up tempo game, um, would stay relatively close. But in the second quarter, the Rough Riders, they really took it to Elida. They got, got things going defensively. They started hitting from behind the arc a lot more. And that was a 19 to five quarter in favor of St. Mary's as they have opened up a big lead here going into halftime. Oh, they certainly did. They're taking advantage of their height in every way to shut down that middle, not let Elida in there. Elida just can't buy a basket either. I mean, you know, shooting wise, they're six for 27 from the field, you know, just one for seven from three point range. So if they can't hit from the outside, they're certainly not going to get anything on the inside. They're just five for 20 and two point shots. You know, they're holding their own on rebounds with 14 to 15 for, uh, surprisingly, for St. Mary's, but St. Mary's 12 for 26 shooting wise, and, you know, Eight for 13 on the inside. They don't miss on the inside. They get that ball, and they're in great half-court offense, finding the open guys. The light has got to hit outside shots. That's all there is to it. If they can't make anything on the outside, they're not going to get St. Mary's out from underneath that basket. And if they can't get St. Mary's out of there, they're in deep trouble. 
We know that this Elida team will not quit. They can score quickly as well. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments Coach Tabler makes at halftime. And you know that Coach Hageman, he's been doing this a long time. Oh, yeah. He knows better than to even start to think that this one is even close to being over. Halftime underway here. When we return, we will have the third quarter. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens, all at Ultimate Outdoor. I'd like to thank Dr. John Stocker, DDS. He's tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School. Second half just about underway. Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergal. You know, and Dar, what kind of adjustments do you think that the line is going to have to make here in the second half to get themselves back in this one? Well, like I said, they've got to hit some outside shots. They've got to be able to pull this St. Mary's team away from that basket. You know, and then they've got to be able to shut them down on the inside. But mainly, they've got to get in the scoring column. They hit 22% from the field in the first half. They couldn't even hit the free throw line. They were one four at the free throw line as well. Step back three on its way. That one's going to be behind the backboard. Missouri Island comes up empty on their first possession. We'll see what kind of defensive adjustments Elidas makes, and it looks like they're going to come out and show pressure. Yeah, they've got to force some turnovers. They only got three turnovers on St. Mary's in the first half. Ed Scorn does a nice job of getting down and forcing Haney into a bad shot. It's going to be too strong. Back to the Bulldogs. Ed Scorn drives. He's going to be fouled. I believe they're going to get Turner for this one. And no, that one's going to go on Owens. Owens picks up his first. Team's first of the quarter. David Ed is going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line to shoot two. That's going to 75% free throw shooter. Just had three points there in that first half and averages about just under 12 points a game. But that's the other thing, Nate. They've got to score when the clock's not moving. They've got to hit these free throws when they get the chance. That was a great drive by Escort to get in there and get that foul right off the bat. They've got to do a lot more of that. Escort connects on both of his free throws. Owens moves quickly, gets it up to Haney, and now the Rough Riders will slow things down. Nice job by Sharp, reaching in there, taking that one away. Edscorn steps into a three. That one's going to be no good. Fight for the loose ball. Ends up in the hands of the Rough Riders. Angsman gets it up into the front court. He's going to drive baseline. He's going to be fouled by Island, and he's going to make a trip to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. The Island just trying to do anything just to get into Angsman's way. They try to reach around and poke that one away. Too much contact. That's 11 points now for Angsman, and that puts two players for St. Mary's in double figures. Turner with 11, and Angsman down with 12. Angsman is able to connect. The other thing for Light is they got to keep in mind, too, that you're not going to get all these points back in one, you know, but you got to take advantage of every opportunity that you get. Island has this one taken away. Payne on the other end. He's just going to lay it off the glass. And it is now a 22-point deficit. Ida's got to find a way to start chipping away at this deficit. Cobalt gets it over to Walsh. That score and spins. Has this one taken away. And we just continue to see the length of St. Mary's cause issues. Elida, though, fortunate to get this one back as Zori just has to dribble through the size of the Rough Riders, gets it over into the corner, three-pointer on its way, no good. And then a foul as Island come down with the foul. And we're going to check it out here on the instant replay. You see Turner go up for that, and Island tried to swipe it away, and he must have got um, some contact there on that left arm. Got shielded away from our cameras, but it was an instant foul, so it's hard to know exactly what Island's upset about. Well, I think he, he's upset because he thinks he didn't even touch him. But, you know, you swipe your arm down like that, the referee's going to see it. Underneath, Stagger gets the easy basket as Elida was trying to use this pressure. 
to try to see if they couldn't force some turnovers, but what it's led to is some easy baskets for St. Mary's. That's Steger's first basket. Gonna have another foul. This one's gonna go on Cobain Owens. It's gonna be his second. Team second here of this quarter. Right now, Nate, it looks like the light is just playing at too fast of a pace for themselves. I mean, they're making mistakes. They're not keeping, you know, getting clean passes in there. You know, their shots are hurried. What a great job by Seth Sharp to work on the inside as he spun through the defense and was able to get that one in. Well, that's Sharp's first basket of the night as well. Oh, or excuse me, Payne left wide open. Can't connect on that one. Walsh comes through with the rebound. Koval with the basketball, gonna jump stop in the lane. Can't get that one to go down. Steger with the rebound. He just can't buy a basket in, no matter where it's at. Here's Owen. See Turner trying to work on the inside against Krim. They finally get it to her. Hanksman gonna take the deep three and he oh. connects. Evan Hanksman is feeling it. As Evan Hanksman now with 15 points, he leads all scorers. 43-18, another whistle as this one's going to be knocked out of bounds. Evan Jackson will check in as Seth Sharp's going to take a seat. And this St. Mary's defense is just outstanding right now. I mean, their hands are everywhere. They're forcing these guys to just try to dribble out of things that they can't get out of. And they're just poking away at them. you got to give a lot of credit to that St. Mary's coaching staff. Amari Walsh's shot is up. That one's going to be off the front of the rim. They obviously watched a lot of film and went to work, especially after that first game with Elida, and they have caused the Bulldogs all sorts of issues here tonight. Anksman turnaround jumper gonna be no good. Walsh comes up with the rebound. He's gonna go quick. Walsh goes all the way over and gets this one to go. Coast to coast, Lamari Walsh gets it off the glass, and then an immediate timeout on the floor. We're gonna have the Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you play in your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School where the Rough Riders have pretty much picked up right where they left off there at the end of the first, uh, first half. They've opened this out to a 23-point lead. They have the basketball. Payne kicks it down to Steger and thought about the three-pointer but decides to pull it back out. Yeah, at this stage, I think St. Mary's just, you know, the clock's in their favor, and they're just going to kind of move it around, find the best shot they can, not take those la shots. Particularly the guys, you know, on the wings there. They, you know, they haven't been that eager to shoot as well as it is. Turner working hard on the inside. Krim trying to keep him out. One-on-one, -on -one, turnaround jumper for Turner. No good. That score comes up with the rebound. That score and trying to push it up to Cobalt, and it's going to get knocked down of bounds by Owens. You just continue to see that length of St. Mary's causing issues. They're getting their hands in the passing lanes. It seems like they're knocking every other pass out of bounds or at least uh, knocking it off its target. Walsh gets it over to Cobalt. Cobalt with a catch and shoot three. He gets that one to go down. Jackson Cobalt with his first points of the night. It's a Web Insurance Agency three pointer. And they're going to need a lot more points from Jackson Cobalt tonight, too. You know, he's averaging about just under seven points a game, and that's his first three. Turner hands off to Payne. Payne going to work around that right side. Gets that one up and in. So even when Elida has been able to get a basket, St. Mary's has had an answer. Krim works underneath, does a great job, let the defense leave their feet as Kobe and Owens is going to pick up his third foul. That's Krim's first basket of the night. Parker Krim is going to make a trip to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. He'll shoot two. Or excuse me, she'll have the end one opportunity. That's a 35% free throw shooter. 
Graham lines up his first shot, and it's up on its way, and it is no good. Hanksman comes up with the rebound. See, the Bulldogs still trying to put some pressure where they can. St. Mary's does a nice job of passing out of it. Hanksman saw him hit a three from that spot on the floor earlier, but can't connect on that one. I'll tell you, Nate, you just watch St. Mary's on their half-court offense. They're just throwing the ball over the top of Elida. They haven't been able to get up there and get it. Marwa spins into the lane, gets that floater to go down. Mari Walsh with his second basket of the quarter. 45, 27, 2.30 left to go here in the third. Turner gets it down to Payne and finds Haney. And surprise, Haney uh -huh. kicked that one back out. I think he was just surprised he was that open. Payne uh -huh. runs in, able to get that one off the glass. And we're going to have another timeout. This one's going to be uh, on St. Mary's. It'll be another Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's three points are brought to you by a web insurance agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Tonight's free throws are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in a Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 2.18 left to go here in the third quarter. St. Mary's on top, 47-27 where Elida has just not found an answer for the offense here of the Rough Riders. No, they certainly haven't, and Elida's defense hasn't been able to shut down, you know, St. Mary's at all, you know. Highland kicks it down into the corner. Walsh lets the defender fly by, resets his feet, and gets that one to go for a Web Insurance Agency three-pointer. Elida with the steal. Seth Sharp gets it into the hands of Walsh. Walsh finds Cobalt. Cobalt's going to drive, but works through the defense. Got that one up, but Turner able to send that back into the hands of Angsman. You can't fall, you know, light up for their effort right now because they are really working hard out there just to get anything going at all. But, you know, they got a, quite a deficit. Just down 17 points. They still got the opportunity to come back in this game. It wasn't too long ago they were down 25, so they've cut into this deficit. They got to get a few more stops here before this quarter comes to an end. Hanksman with the basketball, gets it back up top to Haney. 108 left to go in the third. Stagger down in the corner. Drops it off to Hanksman. Hanksman had the double team, has to kick it back out. Stagger thought about the three-pointer, but decides to push it back out. I mentioned earlier, Dar, St. Mary's knows that the clock is on their side. They do not need to be in any hurry to put this shot up. Yeah, they don't need to throw up any shots on the outside right now. They can just work it around until they find, you know, Turner open on the in inside or Angstman, either one. 35 seconds left to go. The Rough Riders more than happy just to let the clock continue to run until Elina forces the issue here. Payne, he's going to drive. Now has a nice, fine, long, extended offensive possession. Ends in a basket for St. Mary's. Island trying to go quickly. Kicks it out to Walsh. Walsh got it down into the corner, and it's going to be last touch by Sharp. See on the instant replay, Turner was there trying to cause some disruption, and it worked. As Sharp wasn't able to gather that pass in. So now with 13.7 seconds left to go here in the third, St. Mary's will have a chance to take the last shot. And it's interesting to watch St. Mary's on their half-court offense. It, they seem content to let Turner do the work on the inside while Angstman's trying to do it on the outside. Island trying to get the travel when it looked like Steger might have gotten away with it there. If it hadn't been for the ball going off the foot of Island, Elida might have gotten that turnover. 5.6 seconds left to go now. Hey, you see the switch off there with Angstman coming out top again. Turner staying underneath. Payne's going to get called for the offensive foul. Great job underneath by Seth Sharp to get his feet set. Noah Payne picked up his second. 
Two seconds left to go as it's going to be tough to see if Elida has something here to try to get themselves at least a decent look at a shot. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get a shot off here when you got the height of St. Mary's has got out there. Island from the half court line. Now one doesn't connect and the third quarter comes to a close. So we, the deficit stayed right where it was start at, the, at the start of the third quarter as Elina finds themselves down at 19. We're going to step aside. We'll be back with the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens, all at Ultimate Outdoor. I'd like to thank Dr. John's Dr. DDS. He's tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Fourth quarter just about underway here at Liberty Benton High School in the first district semifinal. Following this game will be the Shawnee Indians taking on the Napoleon Wildcats. The winner of this game will take on the winner of that game for the district championship and a chance to move on to Bowling Green next week in the regionals. As Island trying to force a turnover as Elina is going to have to find a way to create extra possession. They get one here. Walsh going to move quickly, going to attack the rim. As you saw that burst of speed and as he loses the basketball, and they're going to say last touch by Amari. Number 13, Jackson Cobalt, replacing Roberts. Hey, you're right, Nick. You saw the burst of speed of Amari Wash on that one right there, you know, but a little bit out of control when he went through there trying to split two different defenders. Now it'll be interesting to see what St. Mary's does here in this fourth quarter if they slow it down completely. And, just try to take advantage of the clock even more. I mean, you've been around basketball for a really long time, Dar. You know, we've watched a lot of games and we've seen a lot of things. You know, there's a lot of different philosophies based on, you know, who you are and what you've experienced and when it comes to protecting a lead like this mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. I mean, what do you, you think you should just let your offense keep going? Do you think you should take the air out of the basketball and just let that time go? I mean, what, what do you think is the best when you get into these situations? I personally think they just ought to let it keep going. I mean, you build up your momentum. You've got your team, you know, in rhythm right now, playing well. Just let them play. You know, don't, don't take them out of it and find themselves, you know, making mistakes that they didn't, weren't making throughout the rest of the game. No it's kind of like for dent. Payne was off on that shot. Walsh working through that screen. Gets that one to go down. Amari Walsh trying to keep the Bulldogs in this one. It's kind of like prevent defense in football. I mean, you know, you start playing that, and you're, you're playing to, to not lose, basically. All the prevent defense does is prevent you from winning. That's right. <laughs> And I, I actually agree with you. I think that the offense should keep playing. I think you have opportunities if you start, you know, if you keep playing the offense and things like this start happening where you can call the timeout, regroup, you know, come, come up with a different plan. But until it starts working against you, there's no reason to change what you're doing. It'll be interesting to see as kind of these last couple of long possessions by St. Mary's, you know, we've seen them end in turnovers if maybe they go back to just trying to get back to what was working early. They need to. I mean, you know. You, you make mistakes, that, you know, like I said, that you weren't making earlier in the first three quarters, so you don't want to do that. But a lot of teams will go into that. They'll go into that, slow down, you know, trying to protect the ball, protect their lead, you know, and then they find themselves having to hustle at the end. And right now, Elida is still trying to create. And we're going to have a conversation between the officials, and they're going to say ball back to the Rough Riders. I don't know if it was a foul or if they just said out of bounds. So Elina with the trap along the near sideline. Doesn't result in the call that they would have liked. St. Mary still with the basketball here. Stager working through at scoring. Gets it up into the front court. Decides to pull it out. Finds oh, a nice, nice job. job underneath finding a cutting Kobe and Owens for two. And it's going to have to be another turnover on the other side as Cobalt can't gather that one in. Surprising, I've just got to unofficially Elida with nine turnovers for the game. And you know, with the pace that Elida's been playing, that's not that bad. 
They just haven't been able to knock down any shots. Owens with the basketball, moves it up quickly. He's going to go all the way in as you see St. Mary's getting back to what was working as they are attacking the basket and they are scoring. 53-32, 5.30 left to go. Zori Island for a three-point try, no good. Seth Sharp tries to get that rebound and we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on Angsman. See on the instant replay, Sharp fighting hard for that basketball. Angsman reaches over the top, too much contact. He picks up his first of the night, or excuse me, that's his second of the night. He lighted just three for 15 so far from three-point range, so they really have not been able to, to pull this St. Mary's team away from the basket. Seth Sharp for three. That one oh, rattles yeah. down as Seth Sharp connects on a Web Insurance Agency three-pointer. And then we'll have a full timeout on the floor. We're going to step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you play in your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to Liberty Benton High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergall. Fourth quarter here, 520 left to go. St. Mary's on top big, but Elida trying to find some way back into this game. And we have an immediate whistle coming to the timeout as Zori Island is going to get called for, I believe, will be his third foul. Zori Island his fourth. Or no, excuse me, that's his fourth. That's why all the numbers up here are very unofficial, though. <laughs> are very unofficial. <laughs> Yep. But you see Island out there. I mean, you see the frustration on that young man's face. You know, he's going to take a seat right now. He hasn't scored here in the second period, in the second half at all. He's had five points in the first half, but he's he's put a lot into this game, but he just hasn't been able to get any results. And Zori Island's one of those players who he has played a lot of varsity minutes for Matt Tabler as he came out as a freshman. And we're going to have no shot. They're going to be a foul on the floor. It's it looked like Seth Sharp caught the worst end of that one, at least from our angle. And then to top it all off, he's going to get called for the foul. Yeah, replay, yeah, Sharp. I, was he still moving? I don't know. Yeah, it, it was awfully close. And unfortunately for Seth Sharp, he took the forearm to the face and gets the foul. Hanksman works underneath. He gets that one to go up. And that's one of the few times in the second half I've seen Angsman go underneath the basket. Mari Wallace has his shot knocked away twice. Elida able to maintain it as Sharp now works that baseline. We're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on Angsman. So as you can see, Sharp as Angsman just leans into that one. Good call by the official. Lost Trigger into the inbounds. Looking for someone open. Finds Sharp down in the corner, but pretty much just like everything else tonight, St. Mary's is able to get their hands on that basketball, send that one out of bounds. Well, you look down through the St. Mary's lineup, 6'3", you know, 6'6", 6'7", 6'2". A lot of height out there, but they're not only just height, but long arms too, I tell you. That's scoring with the jump stop in the middle. That one's off the rim. Final 440 left in this one. Owens with the basketball. He's working against Dayhill. Dayhill came in for Zori Island a little earlier. That scoring takes this one up ahead, gets it off the glass for two. 7 points now for David Exmoor. Payne Gets into the trap. You see St. Mary Bench trying to call timeout, and they get it. And I know the Elida fans aren't happy about it, but immediately as the trap comes, you could see the assistant coach from St. Mary jumping up, calling that timeout. So you can see on the instant replay, if you watch the bench, they're immediately calling it before that tie-up. So good call by the official under the basket to recognize that and to call that one. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll keep it here, though. Another Metzger Financial Services timeout. You know, we talked about the winner of this game tonight. They will go on Saturday night to play the winner of Shawnee and Napoleon. 
as you know, you have a chance, depending on how the second one goes, to have an all WBL district final. As you know, more often than not, when we get to this part of the tournament, there is just one juggernaut WBL team after another. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You've got these two tonight. You've got Shawnee coming in after this. And you've got OG over, the, over there as well. I mean, and Ottawa Glandorf won a, uh, a district semifinal last night against Liberty Benton over at Lima Senior. They'll take on Spencerville this weekend as the Western Buckeye League continues to be well represented the deeper you get into the tournament run. And it really doesn't matter, if, you know, who's played who during the regular season and who's won during the regular season. You get this point in the tournament time, as you're seeing here tonight with St. Mary's, who lost to a lighter earlier on in the regular season, dominating this game tonight. St. Mary's with the long inbounds. Get it down to Turner, kicks it right back out to Payne. Four minutes left to go. Now might be the time that we see St. Mary's try to go back to slowing things down, but Dayhill doesn't want to do that. Gets the steal. Can't finish on the other side. Sharp with the rebound. He can't get it to go down, but he's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. See the fight down underneath with the ball ended up in Sharp's hands. That foul is going to go on Steger. It's his first, team's third here of the quarter. Sharp's first shot on its way, and it is good. Substitution for St. Mary's number 13, Alex Haney, replacing Steger. Alex Haney coming back into the game for St. Mary's. Zori Island checking back in. Zori Island with those four fouls. Still a lot of time on the clock, so he's going to be careful to make sure he doesn't pick up that fifth. Sharp's second shot is on its way, and it is good. Seven points now for Sharp, all here in the second half. So Sharp is going to check out of the game. Evan Jackson is going to come in to replace him. Owens looking for someone to go with the basketball. Gets in the hands of Haney, and we're having over the back. And St. Mary's going to time that up very well as Payne was coming across, but caught it when he was still in the backcourt. As you can see on the rebound, and ooh, it was awfully close when you look at the rebound. I, you know, Depends on uh, your interpretation of the rule, even though I think it's very clear in the rule book. You know, Elida might have gotten a, a lucky bounce that time, so they're going to try to see if they can't cut into this lead. Down 16, 340 left to go. Wash with the basketball, gets it over to Edscorn. Edscorn saves it from going out of bounds. Ooh. A little bit of a lazy pass that time. Sharp was able to keep, and this one's going to go out of bounds. Stays with the Bulldogs. I mean, Elida has forced... Uh, St. Mary's into eight turnovers here in the second half, you know, 11 altogether. They only had three turnovers in the first half, so Eli has put more pressure on them. That scoring deep three on its way. That one's no good. Island with the rebound. Zori working through some traffic. Gets the one-on-one. -on -one. Step back three on its way and good. Zori Island has been held scoreless here in the second half. Connects on a web insurance agency three-pointer. 55-42. Island, a little hobbled that time. Looked like he might have tweaked his ankle. Someone's got to come out and play defense. He's in some pain. Not sure if it's the ankle or the knee. I wasn't knee, seeing I what happened as I was writing something down on the scorebook, so I'm not sure exactly what happened, but he's obviously a little hobbled, trying to fight through it. St. Mary's not trying to take advantage of it, though, as they just want to let some clock run here. They've seen their lead shrink to 13. Got this a big mismatch underneath the basket, though, with Island at 5'9", and Angstman at 6'7". And now we're going to have the foul call. This one's going to go on Sharp. Seth Sharp is going to pick up his third foul. It's the team's fourth here of the quarter. So he looks like he's moving a little better now, so it might have been one of those things we just kind of had to yeah, work through it for a second. A little on his knee, yeah. I think. There's Angsman down low, gets that one off the glass. And now it's going to be a timeout. This time it's going to be St. Mary's turn. Another Metzger Financial oh, Services timeout. timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's three-pointers are brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lyman Allen County for more than 100 years. 
with offices in downtown Lima and uh, Bluffton. Tonight's free throws are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back. As this one has gotten a little bit closer than what it looked like. 228 left to go in this one. 15-point deficit, but Elina finally starting to get a few things going offensively. And defensively as well. I've said they forced him now into eight turnovers here in the second half. And uh, but you're looking at the scoring column, you know, for this St. Mary's team. Very balanced scoring. Anspin with 19. Nice spin move by Walsh is able to get that one to bounce in off the back of the rim. As Walsh now has four points here in the quarter. Uh, Ari Walsh is going to pick up this foul. It's going to be his second team's fifth. So St. Mary's is going to be shooting two the rest of the way and. Yeah, I think this is where a lot of people have anticipated the difference in this free throw change that we, you know, it's been talked about a lot all year. It's been all year, so everybody's kind of gotten used to it. But I think a lot of people around the game were wondering how that change come tournament time yeah, might play in. And this is a great example. You know, you, Cobain Very Owens nice going to the line here in the fourth quarter, still 2.12 left to go as St. Mary's is going to be shooting free throws the rest of the way, but no more one-on-one, -on -one. and he goes in there, he knocks down both. Yeah, it gives you a little breathing room. If you miss that first one, you still got a second one. And you don't want uh, Cobain Owens to be the guy going there. He's an 82% free throw shooter. Cesare Island trying to continue just to drive and keep things going for his team as Steger picked up that foul. As that one's going to get knocked out of bounds. As Cobalt was trying to get that one up. Stay with Elida. And Island will do the unbounds one more time under the basket. He's been doing a nice job coming over there to block that one. Cobalt going right into the teeth of that St. Mary's defense. This time he's going to be fouled. And that is the fifth team foul for the Rough Riders. So now it's going to be Elida with an opportunity to go to the free throw line. And this is what they're going to have to do. They need to convert. They haven't shot great from the free throw line, but they've done a better job here in the second half. And as Jackson Kowalt's first shot from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line connects. Jackson, a 64% free throw shooter coming into this game. Only had 28 free throw attempts coming into the, this game against St. Mary's. But it's the first one of that. Well, second shot is up and good. And the net barely moved on that shot. So Elida has cut it to 13 several different times, but they haven't been able to get that defensive stop to get any closer. Let's see if that changes here. As we have a collision right around midcourt as Amari Walsh is going to pick up his third. Payne is going to go to the free throw line. Amari Walsh, his third. And again, we talk about that free throw, you know, world change. And here he is going back to the line again two opportunities. Noah Payne goes up, confidently knocks down the first. 60 to 46, Seth Sharp coming back into the game. Noah Payne, second shot on its way. That one's good. Four for four from the line for St. Mary's here in the quarter. Making free throws when it counts the most. Sharp spins, has that one rejected. As Turner and Engsman have just gone to work underneath. Turner gathers his oh, one in. My. Somehow just gets it over to Engsman, and Engsman gets it in for two. That's 21 now for Engsman. Amari Walsh kicks it out. Cobalt for three. That one's going to be no good. Turner with the rebound. 125 left to go as it looks like St. Mary's is going to come away with this victory here tonight. Angspin's going to finish, can't oh. get that one. Trying to get the exclamation point on it. Cobalt almost drug that feet, but held it. Sharp resets, gets that one to go in. Seth Sharp connects, and we're going to have another timeout on the floor. As Elida and Coach Tabor wants to take a timeout and talk about things, we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. As Elida comes out of the timeout, it was more or less just to kind of get some wholesale changes in there. Nick Garlock alongside Darn Evergall. And this district semifinal is coming down to a close. As it looks like the Rough Riders will move on to take on the winner of Shawnee or in Napoleon. As Dayhill comes in, knocks that one away. Seth Sharp coming back into the game. As David Edscorn, the senior, going to come out of the game. The fans are going to give him a standing ovation. The young man has had a fantastic high school career. Just recently committed to continue his athletic career in college. As he's going to move on and play football at the next level. Turner with his second trip to the free throw line tonight. One for two in the first half. Just two points here in the second half. But his Turner presence on defense has been something too. Yeah, absolutely. As you see Turner connect from the least St. Trespe Chicken free throw line. He still have one shot coming. But yeah, I think, you know, offensively he obviously slowed down as Anksman is in a lot of that heavy lifting. But that defensive presence underneath and get the rebounds and sending some shots away proved vital for the Rough Riders as they wanted to protect and then even expand that lead as Turner's going to come out of the game. More substitutions coming in. Hank's been out of the game as well. He finishes with 21 points tonight. Turner finishes with 15. 50 seconds left to go in this one. Sharp with the basketball. You gotta love the game plan that the Rough Riders came up with. That one goes down. Tanner Roberts gets into the scorebook. Well, we talked about WBL teams very familiar with one another. These two had played each other uh, just about a month ago, and that was a victory for Elida. The coach Hagemeyer did a nice job of making the adjustments as you knew he would. And they came in tonight with that stifling defense. They really used the length to their advantage caused all sorts of disruptions all night long for the Bulldogs, and it led to what's going to be a big victory for the Rough Riders. Well, they certainly did. I mean, they did it in a lot of different ways. I mean, they ran great half-court offense. They used their long arms to throw, basically throw the passes over the top of uh, Elida. They, you know, Elida tried to put a press on. That didn't work. As the St. Mary's broke that time and time again. More but Elida really just couldn't hit any shots. And yeah, more substitution comes in for the Bulldogs. As Coach Taylor now just trying to get everybody an opportunity here before this one comes to a close. And you see another make from the lead, famous recipe chicken free throw line. You know, Coach Taylor obviously not going to be happy with how this one has ended, but the jump that this program has made, you, you know that Coach Taylor, it's not going to be, you know, hey, this is an exception. This is going to start being the way, this is the expectation now, not Absolutely. the exception as this program moving forward is going to expect to see results like they did this year. Yeah, he's going to re rely heavily on Zori Island. He's only a junior. Parker Krim, a sophomore. Amari Wash, only a sophomore. As the final seconds have clicked off, the St. Mary's the Rough Riders will move on to the district finals. We'll step back, we'll step away and be back to talk about it. Don't go anywhere. We're watching High Boys High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back. It's time to announce tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner. Check out the highlights of tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. And we talked about a couple of different guys, Dar, on that St. Mary's side of things, but it was all said and done. The scoring, the presence, defensively, offensively from Evan Anksman, it got him this award tonight very much deserving. Oh, very much deserving. He finished with 21 points on the night. You know, he had nine points in the first half, and then he just came back in the second half and just kind of dominated. He started out hitting a lot, you know, hitting from the outside, some deep three-pointers, you know, that really got the St. Mary's offense going, you know. And then his, his just his length to block shots and control this you know, in the middle. He played a lot on the outside, you know, moved in and out, you know. So he did everything he could for St. Mary's tonight in this victory, and he just played an outstanding game. Very impressive victory for the St. Mary's Rough Riders as they will move on to play the winner of Shawnee and Napoleon. That game will be following this one here at Liberty Benton tonight. 
as that should be a great matchup. Take a look at the updated bracket. St. Mary's moves on. That game will tip at 6 o'clock on Saturday night right here. And regardless of who wins that second one, St. Mary's is going to be a handful for either Shawnee or Napoleon. You know, they've kind of been a little bit of a work in progress throughout the season, but Coach Hagemeyer has really done a nice job, especially over the last six, seven weeks, of really getting these guys going. And when Angsman is on from the outside and with what Turner can do on the inside, along with the help he gets from Payne and Owens and, and Haney, they don't really have to go very deep into that bench, but no. this is a very dangerous team. Oh, they certainly are. And, and when you got a coach like Hagemeyer in there, I mean, this guy, you know, 670 wins in his career, just 357 losses. And, I mean, he, he's going to put the team together, and he's going to take advantage of whatever the t other team gives you, and that's what he did tonight. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Liberty. Ben, I'd like to thank tonight's crew, our director, Ken Ricker, set, set, setting everything up and running everything for us. A great job, as always, running the cameras, Curtis Aldrich. We appreciate everything you do. A special shout out for to uh, Nate Irwin here at Liberty Bend High School for getting everything set up, getting us a, a nice space here. It's always a joy to come here, and they always treat us really well. We appreciate everything they uh, do uh, for us. One final time, the St. Mary's Rough Riders come away with a the victory. They top the Atlanta Bulldogs at 65-51. For Darn Evergall, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.